This video is brought to you by All Parts. All Parts is celebrating over 40 years of delivering premium tools for tone. Upgrade your rig today at allparts.com. Here at my workshop in Iowa City, we're here with Premier Guitar today. We're going to discuss floating the strap bridge. To float the bridges, we got a handful of tools. We got a ruler with 32nd and 64th of an inch increments. We got a couple screwdrivers. We got some feeler gauges. We got a string winder, a tuner, and we're going to use these trim wedge blocks from Skyscraper Guitars. They CNC notches into these blocks of mahogany. And they're all different thicknesses and angles for different vibrato systems. Floyds, strats, and they work great. They're easy to understand. The notches really help you dial in the amount, the amount of float that you want on the back side of the bridge here. It makes it just easy. First one we're gonna start with is the vintage style. This has the six screws on it, just like the old school ones. First thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to back these off quite a bit, you know, so that when you string it up to pitch, this gets kicked. With the vintage strap vibrato with these six screws, um, the strings are slacked right now. You're gonna wanna tighten these up right until you see the plate move a little bit. You'll see the plate flex as you tighten it down. And then you wanna back those off. I back it off just till I see the shadow of the head of the screw. And then these middle ones, I tighten them down and then I back them off just slightly more than the two outside ones. You can measure it with feeler gauges if you like, the gap here. Okay, so the next step is we're going to put some tension on the guitar. We're going to pull the bridge up. We have backed the springs off in the back so this bridge will come up drastically. And then we'll pull it back and put the block in. and we'll get the, the gap that we're looking for in the back here. Okay, so let's talk about these trim wedge blocks from Skyscraper. They're all different sizes for different cavity spaces here where this block goes. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and pull up and then install this block back here and the tension that we have on will hold it in place. So that's in there. We have a gap at the back that we like, about an eighth of an inch, give or take. By going to different notches, you can get this by varying degree higher or lower off the face of the guitar. And that's what we have the ruler for. So you can come in here and measure, you know, that's measuring 5 30 seconds of an inch, which that's, that's healthy. That's a, that's a stiff, uh, that's a stiff float on a strap bridge. But, but that's what it's for is dialing in this amount that you want. And then that changes the amount of up pull that you have. So you may, you may want to set that to 16th of an inch or or you may want to set that to where when you pull up it's a half step or Almost a whole step, you know, uh, it just depends on your playing style where you're after with the guitar you have But once it's floating you're fully floating if you break a string you're gonna go out of tune another thing is you can set it to where The strap bridge is just against the body just against the deck, but you have enough uh, Looseness on the springs to, that you can go down so you can set it to where you break a string and it won't go out of tune too bad. Just set it to the deck with down motion, you know, down pressure dialed in. That's all preference. And then at this point, you tune the guitar. The tension is going to hold that block in place for you. Now from here, you want to do the rest of your setup work. You want to get your truss rod adjusted the way you want it. Straight or with a low relief, your preference. Make sure the nut has a good action. Make sure the radius of the saddles matches the curve of the radius within reason to the fingerboard. Make sure the intonation is set. Okay, so you have the block in there. Holding it, tension's holding it in place. All the setup work's done. You got your two outside screws tightened up and backed off a hair. You got the middle four backed off slightly more than the outside ones. You got your pickup height set. It's ready to go. It's time to float the bridge. We got our wedge back here. It's in place. We have the gap at the back of the bridge, what we want to see. So now you're just going to tighten these little by little until gravity lets the block fall out all on its own. 
you're going to wiggle this and it's going to feel like it, it wants to come out, but don't pull it out. Just let gravity make it fall if you want to get the best result. You're going to pull that out and everything will be pulled sharp because it might feel like it's ready, but it's not. So just keep going until it falls out. The distance on these two screws could be different. It might be different. Just keep tightening them a little bit at a time until that falls. You can put these springs wherever you like. You can. I like them all even with the same amount of tension. You can put the outside ones in a little bit for some more tension. That's just preference. And you can do whatever you like, you know. So we're going to tighten just a little bit at a time. And you're just going to go till it falls. I would probably be sitting down and trying to elevate the guitar, you know, try to have the guitar like this as much as I could. Uh, we're shooting this video, so I'm trying to show you. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm tightening it a fair amount. These are just a set of tens on this guitar. Boom. And it fell out. The block falls. The block fell out and the bass strings are slightly sharp. So I'm going to back off the bass side screw just a little bit and then see how close. So that, that helped a little bit. Everything should be in tune, you know, relatively close. Like I said, I backed that bass side off because the E and the A were slightly sharp. So you just back it off till they're in tune or close to it. You know, another thing that you can do on these vintage styles is you can, on a polyurethane finished guitar, you could take a Q-tip and a little bit of Vaseline and you can pop this out and you can put a little Vaseline under this bearing edge here in the front on this vintage style. That wouldn't hurt anything necessarily. Don't do that on a vintage Strat, of course, but on a modern workhorse polyurethane finished guitar. That wouldn't hurt nothing. So, now another thing regarding the arm, these threads are sloppy, so what you can do is you can put a little thread tape on the threads to tighten the feel of it up. What I've found over the years, this is just thread tape for plumbing. You know, you don't, you can use, this isn't gonna hurt anything. You can use as much or little of it as you like. It's redoable. It's just gonna compress and eventually you're gonna pull it out of there anyhow. So you're just gonna wanna put this right on the arm. This isn't anything precious, you know, just little thread tape. You wanna take your thumb and just, your finger and just press it on those threads as hard as you can. You know, you can cut the, you can cut the bottom off if, if it bothers you. That's okay. But you just want to get that around there. Take your finger and dig that in there. Uh, and then thread it back in. And see if you like how that feels. Because that's going to tighten the threads up. Therefore changing the reaction of the bridge. If you don't like the threads sticking out of the top there, you can take it off. Or uh, put less on the top. But but now that's tight. There's no, there's no wiggle in it. It will compress over time. And you may need to redo it. But again, it's something you can do as much as you want but it will change the reaction when you use the strat arm on these front screws here you can take a little bit of tri-flow and you can just wick you don't want to put much this has teflon in it so you don't want to get it everywhere but you can take this and just wick it under you know the screws if you like all six of them then you can also just you know just take a q-tip and just wipe up any excess while you're while you're going to town with the tri-flow it's also not going to hurt anything to get up here on the side of the saddle, height adjustment screws, and capillary action will pull that in, and then those should work better. You can put it on the saddle screws, the intonation screws, and it will just help everything work better. You know, again, no, you don't want to have excess around because it has Teflon in it. You don't want to get to get into the wood, but on the hardware, it's it's awesome. And it will just help everything work better. So, okay, now we're going to talk about the two pivot point modern strap bridge. This is a great bridge. Um, it works well, it stays in tune great, and uh, it's just it's very similar to the vintage style. It's just only bearing against the two set screws here, just sort of like on a Floyd. Uh, we backed off the springs. We have our our block wedged in place here for the amount of space that we want in the back here, the, the gap on the back of the bridge. We have the guitar tuned to pitch. We have all of our setup adjustments done. We've got a new nut, 
the string radius is matched with the saddles, the intonation is set, everything's good to go, we got our pickup height set. The last thing to do is float the bridge, so screws are backed off. So this block is in place, held by the tension. Again, we're just going to tighten these screws up until gravity lets the block fall. And you just go, don't, again, don't pull it out. Just let gravity do its thing. Again, I probably would be doing this with the guitar a little bit elevated, kind of up a little bit, so gravity is pressing on it the whole time. These screw again, this distance on each screw may be different depending on how you have your springs oriented. Whether you're running 9s, 9 to 46, 10s, 10 to 52, you know, it just it all depends on your setup and the feel you're going for. So we're gonna tighten that up. <clears throat> So that block falls out. When the block falls out, you should be in tune. If one side is sharp or flat, you know, and there it is. So it falls out. Those are slightly different distances, that's okay. And then we check for check the tune. Sounds pretty good to me. And you can check the, you know, check it for how in tune it is. Everything is a little bit sharp, just a very small amount. So, you know, common sense tells me, okay, let's just back this treble screw up on the treble side specifically. We'll back this treble screw off just a little bit and then come back and check. The nice thing about floating strats, modern or vintage style, is you can do it as many times as you want. It doesn't hurt anything to, to try a new to try a new, uh, to try a new distance at the back of the bridge for how much pull. You know, you can set it to a half step if you want, or, but you can change it. You know, these, these blocks, they have notches for different, for different settings. So you can try them all. You know, you can have it really kicked up. You can have it flat to the face with just enough pull to go down. There's no wrong way to do it once you understand a few simple concepts. Uh, again, the tri-flow, just on the bearing points, like on this on this little blade setup, you just want to put a drop there, you'll see it wick in with capillary action, you know, whatever, come in with a Q-tip or a paper towel and just clean up any excess. Again, you don't want to get the tri-flow on the wood or in the wood, but it works real good for floating. And uh, whenever you change string gauges, you know, you have 9 to 46 on here. You go to a straight set of 10s or a straight 10 to 52, you're going to have to re-float the bridge. If you want it to stay in tune and, and be usable, you know, when you're, you know, wailing live. I'm going to do a quick uh, rundown of the steps that we, we just went through regarding floating the strap bridge. <clears throat> you're going to want to make sure to slack the strings, slack these springs, back them off, and then put some tension on the guitar. Pull this up further than you want to be. You don't have to be in tune. You're going to put one of the blocks of wood in the back here to get your distance on the back edge that you want. You're going to tune to pitch. The tension is going to hold that block in place. Then you're going to finish the rest of your setup work. After the setup work's done, you're going to tighten these springs a little bit on each one. They do not have to be the same distance. They, that's just different string gauges and uh, player preference. And you're gonna tighten them until gravity lets that block fall out. And then at that point you're fully floating. If one side is a little sharp, back off the treble side, screw a hair. If the base side's sharp, back it off. If it's flat, tighten it a hair. You can absolutely tweak those screws and get the guitar back in tune, you know, real close. So if it's not perfectly in tune when the block falls out, just check it out and you know move the screws a little bit to get it back in tune and, there's, and then there's your float so so yeah happy whamming hey everyone thanks for joining us today uh, with Premier Guitar my name is Dave Helmer from Helmer Guitars HelmerGuitars.com we're going to be doing more DIY videos with Premier Guitar so keep on the lookout for that and make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel